All right, so now that we know how to compute some basic antiderivatives, we can solve pure time differential equations using these antiderivatives. Okay, so let's say we had this uh, model of the AIDS epidemic, okay, where they measured that the rate at which new AIDS cases were reported was equal to 300, or sorry, 523.8 t squared, where t is the number of years since 1981. So the beginning of the AIDS epidemic in the 80s, CDC came up with this model of the number of cases reported since that year, right? So it's growing kind of like a t squared pretty quickly. Okay, so that in the, uh, sorry, in 1981, the number of cases was equal to 340. Okay, so let's write down a differential equation for the number of cases. Our number of cases a. Okay, so the rate at which new AIDS cases were reported is this equation here, right? They measured this as a function of time, okay? So that means that the differential equation was the rate of the number of cases, right? New cases per time was 523.8 t squared. And then the initial condition, right? A at time zero, right? Where t is number of years since 1981. So in 1981, that's time t equals zero, we had 340 cases. Right? So this differential equation plus the initial condition is kind of the system that we're trying to solve. Okay, so how do we write down, solve for a of t, right? Number of cases as a function of time. So that we can know, okay, in which year, you know, 1982, how many cases were there? 1983, how many cases were there? Right, using this differential equation and that initial condition, okay? So if we solve for this A of T, that means we wanna take the antiderivative of D A D T, right? We wanna take the antiderivative of D A D T, right? A T is gonna be this antiderivative, right? It's the antiderivative of 523.8 t squared dt. All right, so let's use our derivative rules so we can pull out the constant. 523.8 times the integral of t squared dt. Then we apply the power rule. Right, so the antiderivative of t squared is going to be one third t cubed. Right, so this gives us 520, oops, 523.8 times one third t cubed plus some constant. Okay, so let's write this out as divide by three, so we get 174.6 t cubed plus constant c. Okay, and so the antiderivative in general has this constant, right? So we need to use our initial condition to determine what that constant is, right? So we plug in the initial condition to find C, right? And that'll give us the specific antiderivative to actually finish, or the exact solution for this differential equation, right? So we plug in the initial condition to find that constant. So we plug in A of zero, which should be equal to 340 by our initial condition. If I plug it in here, I get 174.6 times zero cubed plus C. So that tells me that 340 is equal to C. Okay, so then my solution, to this differential equation with this particular initial condition is a of t equals 174.6 t cubed plus 340. Okay, so in year zero, there's 340 cases. In year one, we would plug one in to this equation to find the number of cases a at time one. Okay, so we can do uh, more complicated 
differential equations too that come from maybe more physical models. So let's say we have another example here. Let's say we're standing on top of a building and we are going to drop a ball off the top of this building. Okay. And uh, we're going to drop it. We're not just going to drop it, we're going to like throw it a little bit. And we're going to throw the ball down off the edge of this building. Okay, and let's say our building is 100 meters tall. Okay. And we have to know something about uh, gravity, right? So gravity gives you an acceleration equal to about negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And so this is just the acceleration due to gravity, right? This is just a constant acceleration that is kind of a constant for, for planet Earth, right? If you're on a different planet, then this gravitational constant is a different number, okay? So when we're on planet Earth, we have negative 9.8 meters per second squared as our gravitational acceleration. Let's say we throw the ball with initial velocity minus five meters per second, okay? So then the question would be, you know, uh, how long will it take to hit the ground? And how fast will it be going with the ball to reach the ground? How fast will it be going? Okay, so we'll need to set up some differential equations to solve this problem. Okay, and to set up these differential equations, we have to know that the derivative of velocity is acceleration. Acceleration, right, which we said was negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so that's the derivative of velocity. We also have to know the derivative of position is velocity, you know, v of t. Okay, so we'll have to do basically two antiderivatives here, right? We'll have to do an antiderivative of this acceleration equals derivative of velocity equation, right? So if we take, if we integrate this, we can compute the velocity as a function of time. And then we have this differential equation for the position. The derivative of the position is the velocity. If we integrate that, we'll get the position. Okay. So we'll need uh, to do basically two differential equations. So let's start with the first one. Right. So if our first differential equation is dv dt equals negative 9.8, right? And we have that the initial velocity is minus 5. And so that's our initial condition that we need to solve this differential equation. Right, so let's find the antiderivative, right? So integrate dv dt. Okay, so velocity is the integral of the derivative of velocity. Right? So we integrate negative 9.8 dt. This is just a constant, so we get out a linear function negative 9.8 t plus some constant c, right? And then we want to pick that constant c to satisfy the initial condition, right? So pick c to satisfy the initial condition, right? So we plug in v of zero is negative 9.8 times zero plus c is supposed to be equal to minus five, right? Which tells us that c is minus five, okay? So then our solution for this velocity equation, the velocity differential equation, is velocity as a function of time is negative 9.8 t minus five, okay? So that becomes our velocity equation, right? Then we need to solve the differential equation for position, right? So then our differential equation for position is dp dt, equals velocity, right? Derivative of position is velocity, which is negative 9.8 t minus five now. 
Okay, and then we also need initial, an initial condition for our position, right? And so let's say that initially we're holding it right off the edge, so the position of the ball at time zero is 100 meters off of the ground. Okay, so let's say that P0 is 100. Okay, and now let's integrate or take the antiderivative of this, right? So position as a function of time is the integral of its derivative, right? So the integral of negative 9.8 t minus 5 dt, right? This is just a polynomial, so we can integrate it up piecewise. So let's say this is negative 9.8 integral of t dt minus 5 integral of 1 dt, right? Or, you know, t to the 0 might be easier to see, right? 1 is t to the 0. So then this gives us negative 9.8 times 1 half t squared. Right? That's just the power rule applied to t. And then minus 5 times 1 over 1, t to the 1. Right? So that's just power rule applied to power 0. And then plus a constant. Okay, So let's simplify this out. We get position as a function of time is negative... Um, so we divide that by t, we get 4.9 t squared minus 5t plus c, right? And then we want to plug in initial condition, right? So find c to satisfy the initial condition. Right? So that gives us p of 0 is equal to negative 4.9 times 0 squared minus 5 times 0 plus c is supposed to be equal to 100. That was our initial condition for this differential equation. So then we plug in zero, we end up with c equals 100. So then that gives us the solution, p of t equals negative 4.9 t squared minus 5 t plus 100. Right? So that tells us the position of the ball uh, you know, above the ground. All right. So now that we have our solutions, p of t and v of t, right, position and the velocity as functions of time, we can get to these two questions. How long will it take for the ball to reach the ground? How fast will it be going at that time? Right, so the first question, how long till it reaches the ground? Right, we're solving for when p is equal to zero. Right, so how long until the ball reaches the ground? Right. So we're solving for the time, t star, where this position is equal to zero. Right, so negative 4.9 t star squared minus 5 t star plus 100. Okay, so we basically have to find the zeros of that uh, time. Okay, so if I just apply the quadratic formula to here, we'll find out that t star, right? I, okay, let me, I can do it out. Um, so we're looking for minus 4.9 t squared minus 5 t plus 100 equals 0, right? So quadratic formula says t is minus b, so 5 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 25 minus 4 times a times c, so minus 4.9, divided by 2 times a. Okay. So then we do this out, we get 5 plus or minus 25 minus 400 times 4.9. Um, so that gives us plus 400 times 4.9. All that divided by 9.8, minus 9.8. Okay. And then if I just skip a couple steps in here, 5 plus or minus, so I'm just adding, multiplying and adding in there. We get 1985 over negative 9.8. And we end up getting about 4.036 and minus 5.506. Okay. Once we solve that out. And because we're thinking about we're dropping this ball at time zero, then we want to go with this positive t. Right? There's technically a second time that solves this equation, but this would be like if we were uh I don't know, throwing it from below 
and then it's reaching the ground at a later time. All right, we're, we're dropping it from up high, so it's just dropping straight down. So we can ignore this negative time one, right? So the ball reaches the ground at time, time t equals 4.036 seconds. If we go back to the units, this is all in seconds, right? Because that's when e of 4.036 is equal to zero, okay? So then the second question was, uh, how fast will it be going when it hits the ground? Right? So in that case, we need to look at the velocity. Okay. How fast is it going when it reaches the ground? Right. So I'm asking, what is the velocity at this time? 4.036. Well, that's negative 9.8 t minus 5. So that's negative 9.8 times 4.036 minus 5. So that gives me um, negative 44.55 meters per second are the units there. Okay, so that's just plugging in the time when it reaches the ground into my velocity equation to find out how fast that ball is going when it reaches the ground. Okay. But again, we are just solving, you know, the setup for this, because it's a word problem, we have to do some translation of all the facts of the problem into these two differential equations, right? The first differential equation being dv dt equals negative 9.8, the second being dp dt equals v, right? And then we have to solve them one by one. So we solve the velocity equation by taking the antiderivative of this differential equation that gave us that the velocity was negative 9.8 t plus a constant. We use the initial condition, v of zero is minus five, to find the value for c that gives us the solution corresponding to this initial condition. So that gave us this velocity equation here, which we then used in our second differential equation, which said that the derivative of position was equal to this velocity function that we found in the first part, right? We got a different initial condition for this differential equation, P of zero is 100. We found the solution to this differential equation by integrating or finding the antiderivative of this negative 9.8 t minus five, right? We have this extra constant c, which we needed to use our initial condition to find the c that actually solves this equation, okay? So we find a c to satisfy that initial condition and that gives us the solution for the position, okay, as a function of time. And then we're able to use our solution as a function of time and our velocity as a function of time to kind of answer these two questions about kind of the physics of the problem, right? So the math was just doing antiderivatives. The physics is then kind of playing around with the solutions that came out of these integrals, okay? So that's the general framework for solving these pure time differential equations. Write that pure time differential equation in a way where you can take the antiderivative and then compute its antiderivative, okay? It's so the next kind of thing to do here is to learn how to take derivatives or sorry antiderivatives of more complicated functions right so everything right now is either a polynomial or it's going to be like a sine or a cosine right but there's going to be some harder integrals and there's going to be integrals that we actually just can't compute by hand ever and that's what we'll need to fall back on our Euler's method and other kind of numerical schemes for computing those antiderivatives all right we'll stop here for now